Andrew Molyneux, one of the founding directors of TM Lighting, the leading specialist in lighting art, whether that's in a museum, a historic house, or your private collection at home. In this video, I'm going to share some of my top tips for lighting art and explain how great lighting can enhance an individual work or an entire collection. The key factors to consider in lighting art are the environment in which it's being displayed, the range of lighting techniques available, and the technology that will ensure a high quality light. To give a room more definition, you should light its vertical surfaces. This allows the eye to focus and settle upon objects in the space. Have a look at these photographs of Waddesdon Manor in Buckinghamshire. With the vertical surfaces unlit, the room feels flat. But with the tapestries and murals lit, and the table setting illuminated, there is far greater sense of depth. The same principle applies in the private residence. You can see how this space is transformed with the addition of its simple downline. Lighting vertical surfaces is part of what we call the layering of light. Assigning specific lights to different circuits or switches so that you can add or remove light depending on the time of day and the intended use of any room. So for example, it allows you to turn artworks into focal points when it gets dark. Spotlights can be used on a track system or individually. They can be used with a close crop, drawing the eye into the artwork, as with this Trinity House stand at Masterpiece London, or this installation by Philip Mould at the same fair. Spotlights are perfect for lighting sculpture, though you will need a narrow beam for that. While at home, they often look more sympathetic and natural if the light is allowed to spill onto other objects in the space. Another technique is to use picture lights, which are a great retrofit solution and are an excellent way to build up the lighting gradually for your collection. There's usually a clever way to hide the cables without needing to completely rewire your house. Classic picture lights sit well in historic environments, as you can see in this interior at Blenheim Palace, where they're being used to light both older and contemporary paintings. And they also work well in modern spaces, as with the contemporary picture lights, you can use them to uplight or to downlight, and even for those dense salon hangs. But remember, when it's lit well, the artwork itself should be the focus and never the lighting tool. The most important thing is to try to balance the light in the room rather than light each artwork individually. People often worry that glazing an artwork will cause a visible reflection, but in fact, most paintings are themselves reflective, and that's particularly the case with oil paintings. You can minimise reflections with specialist lighting if you make sure that it's carefully positioned. The further away the light gets from the lit object, the more chance there is of seeing reflections. Chandeliers often cause reflections because they sit in the centre of the room. These days, specialist art lighting uses LED technology, which has many benefits. LEDs use as little as a tenth of the energy of traditional incandescent bulbs. They have extremely long bulb lives, sometimes as long as 50,000 hours, and so rarely need replacing. And they have advantages for art conservation. Unlike daylight and many artificial light sources, most LEDs don't emit ultraviolet or UV, which can damage delicate pigments nor do they emit infrared light or create forward heat through. This means that in using them, a lot of conservation risks are no longer in play. It is useful to be able to set the light level or lux level precisely for each artwork so that it's appropriate for the conservation needs of the medium and light or dark tones of the work in question. Oil paintings should not be lit over 200 lux and works on paper are never lit over 50 lux. Not all LEDs were created equal, so make sure you consider the following factors. We call them the three Cs. The first is the colour temperature, which is how warm or cold the light is. Generally speaking in the home, we would recommend a warm colour temperature of 2700 Kelvin, whereas in the gallery, you might expect a more neutral colour temperature of 3000 Kelvin. The second consideration is colour rendition, or CRI which is the depth of colour that the light emits. We advise using LEDs with 95 CRI or greater to ensure the best colour representation in the art. Many LEDs miss sections of the colour spectrum, and particularly the red part, which is so vital to many of the artist's pigments. Most LEDs in the market are 80 CRI, which don't emit this light. 
Reds will show as dull pink and gold will take on a green tinge. Your artwork will appear flat when it ought to look vibrant. The final consideration is colour consistency. You can ensure this if you use LEDs from a reputable manufacturer, though it's always worth keeping a note of the brand, colour temperature and colour rendition for future purchases. To summarise, if you want to light your art successfully, always think about three basic factors. The environment, the appropriate lighting techniques and the best LED type technology to not only ensure colour accuracy, but to do our bit for the planet. And remember, when art is lit well, it not only transforms the collection, but also the space.